one of the things that I'd actually like to do from time to time is just actually sit there and just watch water fall. You know, whether it be at a beach or, you know, just sitting where, you know, I can see some sort of natural body of water just flowing freely to be down a stream or just, you know, hitting against, you know, rocks or whatever the case may be. You know, or, you know, just regular water just dripping off the, out of the, you know, your tap at your house or whatever the case may be. You know, and the reason why I like to actually see things like that is because it allows me to really sit there and really think, you know, just really get into really, I would say, a lot of deep thinking. You know, also, you know, sometimes, too, water also represents sometimes a, the psychology of the mind. You know, I'm not trying to get all deep and everything like that, but it's just some things that I actually kind of notice, you know, throughout the course of living. And the thing about it is that whenever I actually want to sit there and really look at and really kind of just get into deep thought about something, I always think about the water, you know, and just watching it, how it, you know, the sounds that it makes when it actually hits the towels. And for the most part, how it really uh, or, you know, hit the rocks or whatever the case may be and how it actually really gets me to really thinking about things and really looking at things and really getting a deeper grasp of something, even though I thought I may have had like some sort of uh grasp on it in the past and a lot of this actually has to do with the state of our community the black community you know and I, this is actually I want to actually do another video about this because I think that you know just sitting up there just listening and just you know allowing the water to really drip you know and really just kind of let it really sink in and get the sound of the water as it hits the bottom of wherever it's going to go you know it allows me to really look at the state of our community and what really of a I would say questionable shape that we're in and you know and if we don't really do anything about it you know it, we're going to be extinct i mean like i say it may sound really crazy but you know sometimes you know when we look for answers for to other people to provide for us we don't really have to look very far the only thing that we really need to do is really the only thing I would say is that we need to literally look deep within ourselves because nobody else is going to actually give us the answer to this problem with what that we see that's plaguing our communities. The only answer that we can see is that we have to look deep within ourselves and be willing to accept what we see. And the issue is, is that I think that the black community is still living in a state of really big denial. You know, when we sit there and really think about this and really look at it in the grand scheme of things, you know, we actually really do have a very, a lot of stuff to really think about. I mean, like I said, you know, with, you know, unemployment and everything that's going on, you know, murder rates and all this type of stuff. And in our community, you know, HIV, new cases of HIV from both our black men and our black women, you know, new cases being discovered every day. I mean, all of these type of things are really working against us. And the thing about it is that we will sit there with, you know, our hands in our pockets, so to speak, trying to figure out why in the world is all of this stuff going on? And the thing about it is that in the midst of us figuring this out, you know, we're still going out there repeating those behaviors that would actually uh, contribute, if you will, to those particular things that are causing our race to get smaller and smaller. I mean, it's no secret. I mean, the, the population of the black race is one of the smallest on the planet. There's not that many of us around as compared to other races, you know, but we actually really have to understand and put things in its proper perspective. You know, when I mean by that, you know, sometimes, you know, when I want to actually, you know, regroup and really, I guess, think and uh, I guess get my head together when I actually want to do a video. Again, as I mentioned in previous videos, I like to kind of sit there and kind of plan, you know, what I want to say. Because, again, I don't want to come across as actually just saying a whole bunch of nothing just for the sake of actually making a video. I mean, we have a lot of people that do that already. So why would I want to jump on the bandwagon? I want to be different. So for that sake, I actually want to sit there and really make sense about what I talk about. Because, again, I want someone to understand, you know, what I'm saying and why I'm saying it. Okay. So when we actually want to look at this thing and really examine, if you will, where our race has gone or where we have come from and where we're going, again, we have to really start back to the very beginning. And of course, you know, when we're talking about starting back at the very beginning, we already know what I'm talking about as far as, you know, the enslavement of African-American people, you know. And the thing about it is that we've done, you've heard me speak it many times before, and you've heard like a lot of uh, videos about it, you know, where we're under the persecution of the white man. We're brought over, you know, uh, into the United States just for the sake of actually uh, producing resources and products, you know, for the white man. And for the most part, we would be, you know, subject, subjected to their scraps or whatever that they feel that we deserve. You know, like I say, you know, I'm not going to really go 
too much into that because again you know that is where our quote-unquote beginnings actually came from you know with you know again the disciplines and the punishments and everything that we actually had to face you know and a lot of it I believe had to do with inferiority a lot of it had to do with uh, jealousy I believe but again I don't want to actually go too deep into that because that's not really the scope of my video but what I actually wanted to talk about is again the effects of actually how we're still living in that particular mindset you know when we're uh, trying to deal with and face our problems today you know again we don't want to continue to use the excuse that slavery has actually really stopped us or hindered our growth in any way but you still do have a lot of uh, African American folks that have no problem in actually accepting defeat or accepting lackluster uh a growth, if you will, and they will be quick to blame slavery, you know, for their reasons why they're not progressing. And I say, you know what, that's complete BS, because again, if you want to progress and move forward, you can do that. It's all about your state of mind. And speaking of that, you know, again, when you're talking about, you know, thinking clearly and everything, we really have to take a look really at our black community. I mean, what's really going on in our black community? I mean, Depending on who you ask, you'll have a lot of people that say a lot of different things. But again, I don't think nobody is really zeroing in to really, you know, think and talk about the issues that are affecting our communities. The only time that they that you actually have someone that is going to sit up there and talk about our community is to exploit who we are, to somehow throw us under the bus to try to make a quick buck or somehow paint us out to be the worst people on earth. And of course, you know, we, some of us, you know, the uneducated ones will buy into that and we will begin to, you know, feel sorry for ourselves, you know, and then next thing you know, we're looking like we're, you know, a needy uh, group of folks sitting out there wanting to get every handout that comes along without actually having any pride or instilling any pride into our people. You know, and like I say, you know, it's it's been a lot of instances now where you can see where, you know, the the black community really, you know, is at a state of really danger. Because, again, we actually sat there and really thought that by having a black president that somehow our lives, our communities would actually change. You know, and for the most part, we see here that really since, you know, we have a quote unquote black president and I will be quick to say that he is not black. Come on, folks. But anyway, since they thought that we had a black president in the uh, White House, that our lives would somehow become a lot better, that we our suffering, if you will, would end and that our quality of life would somehow increase uh, over the years, you know, since we actually had white Republicans in the White House as our president and our leaders. And one of the main things that I actually want to get folks to understand, especially the black folks in our community, is that you cannot sit there and expect that since we have a white leader in the White House, well, a black leader in the White House that you your life is going to somehow uh, I guess become productive just on him and his work alone and see the thing about it is that and what really irks me about this is that you have a lot of black people that sat there and really thought that the issues that plague our society that are taking us out day by day is going to somehow be rectified just because they voted a black person in the office you know for a second term or you know for the most part my particular opinion about this is that I really don't see any change for the most part in the black community and that's due to our own workings it has nothing to do with President Obama or anything like that or what he's or his lack of leadership or whatever the case may be because if you want to actually change something within your communities it's up to you and you alone to actually do the things that and the, take the steps that are necessary to make your community a lot better than what it is instead of waiting and wanting somebody else to come in to do the work for you and I think that's a mindset that really that we black Americans still adopt that's something that we actually have to really understand that you know in order for you to make something happen you got to get out there and work for this thing. It's not going to come and drop out of the sky, but for the most part, since we're actually living in that particular time frame and that mindset, I'm sorry, you know, if you will, we are starting to see the beginnings of a decay in our community where, you know, these different things are it, are eating, eating at us and it's chipping us away. And like I say, when we sit there and we, we look at these things that are destroying our communities, we sit there and look helpless. I mean, if you look at it, I mean, look at it. It all starts for the most part in the home. I mean, you have a lot of, you know, children now that are actually, you know, in the home for the most part that are you know, not really performing well in school. They're not really having any motivations to want to uh, do anything, you know, or to be productive because of, you know, the funding in schools, you know, the 
attitudes that some of the teachers are taking in the uh, inner city schools, if you will, because we already know, let's keep it real. I mean, inner city schools don't get that many, that much funding. I mean, they pretty much have teachers who don't want to really be there to educate our young. And for the most part, the, because of that, the young folks really have taken on the attitude of, okay, well, if you don't want to teach me, then I don't want to learn. And like I said, I'm just keeping it real because like I said, these are things that you can actually see uh, in the uh, that's going on in our inner city communities or inner, you know, in our urban areas or what have you. And the thing about it is that you don't have a lot of people that would like to really speak on it and really be, you know, really open and frank about it. That's just me personally speaking. I believe this is, and like I said, that is just only one aspect of a big picture here that is really painting and uh, shaping the uh, future of our young African-American boys and girls. I mean, and like I say, you know, because of that, you know, they don't really have any pride in themselves. The next thing you know, it leads out to, you know, doing different other things. And like I say, if you don't get the proper education or whatever the case may be on how to actually conduct yourself and actually be productive and what's going to be expected for you as a human being when you grow up, you know, you're going to begin to develop attitudes and everything like that. And if they're not properly channeled and steered in the right and put on the right road, you're going to actually have a bunch of misfits that are going to be actually knocking on the door of death or the jailhouse when they get older. And we see a lot of that again in our, especially in our young black men, you know, who actually feel that they have something to prove by wanting to go out there to, I guess, to show their manhood to somehow intimidate folks. I mean, we see this all the time. I mean, so the thing about it is that, you know, it's ridiculous when you sit there and see these things going on where their pants are sagging down and they look at that as a form of fashion or a right to manhood. I mean, like I say, you know, we, our black community is turning and really is turning for the worse. I mean, and there's really no other way to really put it. I mean, you can try to be as polite and politically correct as you want, but the results are still the same. You're still going to come to the basic conclusion that our young men are in danger. Our young women are in danger because again, they don't really see it that way. But when you look at it and look at this at, with an educated mind, and you look at this thing and see where, you know, this particular behaviors and, you know, things are going to lead to, you know, you can tell somebody, look, stop, you're going to run into danger. But if they don't see it that way, even when it comes down to our young, you know, it's sad and as hurtful as it may be, you have to step back and let them see the errors of their own way and hope that when they do see the errors of their own way, that they would actually be more willing to correct their behavior and, you know, maybe be willing to help someone else not to go down the same road that they're, that they are so happily wanting to travel at this point in time, you know, and again, you know, speaking on that, you know, with the pants sagging down, you know, a lot of this again has a lot to do with issues that's going on in the home, meaning that, you know, in the black community, we have the biggest percentage of, you know, our young being raised by single parents. I mean, you can't really get around from that. There is no more, as they would say, nuclear family in the black community, because for some reason you have, have it where the black a man just chooses, you know, in some cases to walk out on his responsibility and you have, you know, women who may, who really may choose to walk out, even though you don't hear many reports about it. Women do walk away from their responsibility as well. Black women in their households too, leaving the man to sit there and do the best that he can to raise, you know, children, whether it be boys or girls or a combination of them both. I mean, but either way it goes, our community is the main one that actually has a discord in the family structure. And the thing about it is that they don't understand is that when you don't actually start off with a strong foundation, meaning that you have both the male and the female uh, guidance in the household, you know, for the most part, and I'm not saying that it's true for every case because there is, you know, instances where, you know, things, you know, are not part of where, you know, there is an exception to the rule. You know, you're going to end up with someone who really does not have the proper guidance to really be able to handle situations from, you know, these from a, I guess, a more humanistic or a more um, manly standpoint and for a, from a more feminine standpoint. Like, for instance, you have a lot of uh, men who are, again, being raised by single women. I mean, like I said, you can't really, you know, uh, stray away from that. And we can see the results of that in our men. And like I said, you know, I'll get into that more in just a minute. But, you know, we see now where you can tell almost, and I'm not saying it's, it's true in all cases, but you can tell and look at um, a young boy, a young man, adolescent, teenager, early 20s or whatever, you can look at these individuals and actually can tell if they actually, for the most part, were raised in a two-parent household or if they were raised by a single black woman. 
Look at how they respond to the environment. Look at how they deal with disappointment. Look at how they engage themselves. Look at how they carry on conversations, e either in person or on the computer screen. They're argumentative. They don't want to listen to reason. They're illogical in their thinking. And everything that they do and say is based on emotion. Those are feminine traits, fellas, okay, and people who are listening, okay? I'm not saying that, it, that a man shouldn't show emotion. I mean, we're human beings, for goodness sakes. We have to show emotion. But the issue is that when it's taken out of context where it's being the ruling authority on how we actually engage folks and the environment, you know, you can clearly see the picture is right there. And our community is really suffering because of that. I mean, again, what can you do? The only thing I can do is just speak on what I see. And I'm not the only one that sees this. I mean, so like I say, you know, what are we going to do to ensure that we actually have that influence the equal influence from the male and the female standpoint, what are we going to do to get that stuff back in the house? I mean, what do we need to do? Because we see that when one is left, has left the coop, if you will, and left one to do everything by themselves, it is a problem. It doesn't matter if there's a man that's left to run the household by himself or the woman that's left. It doesn't matter because it's all going to equal up to a divide and it's going to, and the main people who are suffering from it are the children that are actually being reared under such circumstances, okay? So let's just keep that in mind. Another thing that I actually wanted to kind of bring a point about, and I've seen this a lot these days, and you've actually seen this, and this has been a subject of a lot of YouTube videos from a lot of different people, trust me, is the fact that you have a lot of grown women that are treating their young boys as if it's that's their man. Now, I have a serious serious problem with that. I mean, I just don't know how I can begin to attack this because I do feel I have so much, I have strong emotions about that because the issue is, is that there's nothing wrong with, you know, to loving your parents. I mean, like I said, there's nothing wrong with showing love to your children, but see the thing about it is that most black women, and I'm not saying, or most black mothers, I'm not saying all mothers because I don't know all black mothers, okay? So I have to put that in there for today's people because for some reason they can't seem to think. But you see an, ever, an, an increasing alarm or an increasing rate of black young mothers or black middle-aged mothers or whatever the case may be referring to their sons as their men. I mean, like I say, the, the young daughters or whatever, they're not even in the picture at all. I don't know for whatever reason, but they're actually doting on their sons to actually take care of them, to provide for them later in life. To do all of these different things because of something that they want, they should, they, that, uh, for something that they should do. And it's like almost like a guilt trip that there's being placed on these young boys that, you know, okay, you can't go and go on and lead a develop a, a, a life and a relationship of your own because you got to come back to me because you owe me something. I gave you life. I will say this. I appreciate everything that my mom does for me. I really do. But I am not going to treat my mother like I would actually treat someone that I'm trying to date. To me, that's unnatural. That is very unnatural. And the thing about it is that to me, it's, it's gross. And the thing about it is that when you see these young women or these young mothers or these middle-aged mothers or however that have that doting on their sons, you know, whether they get a basketball deal, a scholarship or whatever, and they want to actually sit there and dictate where the child wants to go to play, it's their life. You have to let them go. They have to do this. And a lot of times we're going to make decisions that our parents may not agree with. But the issue is, is that when you take over that role as if you are still in their lives, dictating what they should do. If I'm not living under your roof, you cannot tell me what to do. I understand that that's my mom, but the issue is, is that, you know, I have my own life to live. And I understand, you know, she loves me enough to give me advice, and I'm going to take her advice into consideration with everything that I may do, but I'm not going to just lean to that as my ruling weight on how I'm going to go about handling things because there are some things that I may be facing that, you know, I have to put my foot down and put the male influence into it. You understand what I'm saying? And we actually see a lot of these men that are actually making choices based on what grown behind men. Now, let me report that out. These are grown men that are making choices and living their lives through the eyes of their mother. And to me, that is so foul. And the only way you will find that is in the black community. And the issue is that it, 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 it bothers me. It really does. And I just wanted to kind of interject that particular portion in there because, again... 
it's okay again to get advice from folks. I mean, not even not just your parents or whatever, but from people that have lived life that are wise, that you know that are wise, that are trying to steer you and help you to make good decisions that are going to follow you in life. I have no problem with that. By all means, listen to everything that they got to say and eat it up by the mouthful. But what I'm saying is just generally speaking, everything that that you that you want to do, whether it be dating. Intimate things. I mean, there are just some things that I don't discuss with my parents. I just don't because I don't feel that it's their place for them to know. Like I say, but you have some men that now that have that heavily motherly influence in their lives to the point where they will actually run to their moms for everything as if they are still living in their household. And the thing about it is that the mother in, in, in the likewise will return that keep showering him and, you know, keep propping him up as if that's her equal, like that's her man. And that's thing, and it, and like I say, that that is doing nothing more than raising these men, or actually pushing more men out there to be mama's boys. They don't have enough skill or enough backbone to stand up on their own. They don't know how to handle issues in life because the first thing they do, they want to go run to a quote unquote woman to solve their problem. I mean, you don't even see the man nowhere in the picture. I mean, but it could be for a variety of reasons. But it's just the fact that you see a lot of this type of stuff going on. In our communities. And it shouldn't even be. And it's embarrassing. You know, you have some people that win a basketball scholarship to go or, you know, sign an endorsement or whatever the case may be, making a major life decision that's gonna help move them along to another to another step in their life to do bigger and better things. But yet still the mother has to be in there to interject and loud as all outdoors to interject to let her know that this is what be, this is what would be best for her son. You don't know that. You haven't worked hard. You may have worked hard to raise the child or whatever the case may be, but that's it. He's becoming a man. Okay? You have to let go of the shoe strain. You got to cut the umbilical cord loose. He has to be the person that you raised him, and I lose that loosely. You have to make it, you know, let him make his own decisions. But a lot of black women don't get that. And that also, that type of behavior is also destroying our communities. You know, so I figured that I wanted to kind of interject that in there. Now, one of the biggest things also, too, that I've seen that is a problem in our community, too, is our prosperity. We don't even know what to do with our money whenever we, you know, we want to invest in our community. I mean, like I said, the first thing that we do when we actually get money, I would say, the main thing we do is we're looking for things to actually boost our person. You know, we're looking for, as they would say, status. You know, what makes me look more attractive to the opposite sex? What makes me look like I'm balling out of control? What makes me look like I am worth more than what I am? Like I say, and we in the black community, we suffer from that disease all too often these days. And the thing about it is that that's the reason why we are so far behind. That's the reason why we still live in the community, the ghetto communities. I mean, like I say, I'm going to say it because it's the truth and it needs to be said. You know, the first thing that we do with money is that we actually are more concerned about the now than looking in the future of what could actually happen to our offspring. See, what we got to understand is that the way we spend money is a direct relation of to what our children are going to face in the future. You have a lot of people that, you know, going out there and just rushing and spending money on things that really don't amount to much. I mean, you have some people there, I mean, like I said, that are going to spend uh, over $100 on a pair of Nike shoes or whatever the case may be. But yet still, you go back to their apartment, it's in the ghetto, it's pissy, smelly, everything in there. But yet still, they're proud of that as long as they can actually have a name brand pair of shoes or designer clothing or maybe even a nice car. Our values are in the wrong place when we're talking about prosperity. We look at prosperity as more of a thing that is that we should that we can physically wear. And it's and it goes much deeper than that, folks. It goes a lot deeper than that. And the thing about it is that we are not wanting to educate and sit down and really think clearly to see that prosperity goes a lot deeper because the only thing that we're uh, concerned of again is just outward appearance. And the thing about it is that we will gravitate toward anything that comes out that is new, that is improved, that will make us look good as if we have a lot of status. But yet still, you don't understand. You may have a lot of money, but you're still poor. Really. 
in your thinking. You're still poor because you're not really looking deep inside yourself to really see what really is, needs to be done to improve our community. Now, I'm not saying that you have to be pro-black and all this type of stuff, leading marches and everything like that. Like I say, I'm just saying just that we have to be more smart in our investments with what we do with our money, how we handle our finances. I mean, like I say, you know, sometimes we fall out, we may find ourselves in debt and stuff. That just goes with the part of, you know, everyday living. But I'm talking about in the grand scheme of things. We have to really look at where we actually put our money. We invest money in other people and places that really don't care about the black community at all. I mean, if you really think about it, you have a lot of women that go. I mean, the main thing these days, they're wanting to look, you know, get all this hair weave and all this other type of stuff. And I'm pretty sure you have a lot of videos here on YouTube that, you know, allude to the fact of, you know, where most sisters actually find they where they actually feel that their money needs to go. And it's all about beautifying the outward appearance, trying to lead on some sort of persona or trying to live up to some sort of status that they feel that they need in order to attract somebody. And again, the man will follow likewise where he having to sit there and prove what he has, you know, based on what he's got. I mean, and going in debt to try to prove something to somebody. I mean, sometimes we can be some of the dumbest people. We are very smart. But also, sometimes we can be very ignorant in our money and how we spend our money. Because, again, you know, investing in our future doesn't necessarily mean that you have to dress up and look all good today. But, I mean, you don't want to let yourself go. Don't get me wrong. But you want to make sure that you actually leave something behind for your offspring, for someone else to say, you know what, I'm proud that they actually left me something like this. Because we can do a lot more with this. So we can continue this thing on to a newer generation. But again, we don't think like that. We think in the here and the now, not even caring about what's going to go on, what's going to happen, you know, and all that sort of stuff. But again, like I say, it's sad because we get all of these type of uh, images and our actions based on what we see in Hollywood. I mean, Hollywood is like a big uh, contributor and an enabler, if you will, with a lot of the things that we actually see that or the things that we think we need to live up to. And these people, I call this Hollywood, you know, La La Land, because, again, the thing about it, that all of these people, even though they flash their money, they have no substance inside. Listen to what I'm saying, folks. I think it's wisdom time again. You have a lot of people that will sit up there and flash everything that they have, their rings, their bling bling, thinking out of, drinking out of, what, $100 wine bottles, and they figure that that's where it's at. That's who you're supposed to be. If you don't do that or you can't reach that status, then you're a nobody. You may have all of that. And I'm not saying that there's anything wrong with having all of that. But when you allow that to rule you, where it makes you to be the most despicable person to be around, then the problem is not with the other people not having. It's the fact that you are an idiot because you don't see that what you have is turning you into somebody who is very small. No substance inside. Nothing. Because all you are is an outer shell. And the thing about it is that you feel that having that is the way for people, for you to actually have people come to you. You got a lot of black people that are like that. A lot of black people. I'm, there's nothing wrong with climbing the ladder of success, people. That's not what I'm saying. And I don't want anybody to take that away or say that that's what I'm saying. But the issue is, is the attitude that goes behind it. You know, sometimes, you know, you have to, you know, even when you have a lot, it's still good to remain humble. That is the only way I guarantee you that you will get anywhere in life is that it don't matter how much you may attain in this world, you still must remain humble. And that's one thing about it, that humility, especially when success is in the picture, goes out the window for most black folks because they don't even know how to put it in its proper place. And that also is an issue that's going on with our that's going on within our black community. I may do a part two to this. I'm kind of pressed for time. But this is, again, something that I really felt the need to really talk about, because, again, you have a lot of people that don't want to talk about this because they don't want to, again, face the truth. They would much rather be told a lie to make them feel better than to be told the truth where they would actually have to sit down and think. And I'm all about thinking, if you haven't actually noticed that by now. So again, like I said, you know, just kind of marinate on the video for those that choose to watch it. I think that I kind of covered a lot of great issues in here. And like I say, I may do a part two to this. I don't know. But like I say, it, it, it depends on my mood and everything else. So today is a Saturday sun outside and I'm going to go outside and enjoy the day. So peace out, folks. Have a great day.